あいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいや You know there are defections and then there are defections We? Kipruto Arapkirwa is a senior politician He was minister of agriculture in the Kibaki administration Did quite a good job Yeah, many people agree He is a principled man Yeye ni mchapakazi As Karua told us yesterday You know in this life Even you When your name is mentioned somewhere People have an opinion about you yeah, Somebody's name can be mentioned somewhere Ah, huyo ni mtu wa siyasa Ah, huyo ni mtu wa wanawake And so on and so forth When Kiro's name is mentioned People say mchapakazi Yeah, this is a serious man But then the question is, what was he doing in UD in the first place? That one to be is a real mystery for somebody who understands the man. Anyway, my show today is about this defection and what it means especially to the UDA party and what it also means to Azimio. This is called analysis. Yeah, this is not a celebration for Azimio supporters. Oh, this is a major defection, blah, blah, blah. Celebrate, celebrate. No. This is a cold analysis. Looking at the politics and the impact in the upcoming presidential elections. Yes, it is major. Yes, many people are excited. But we stick to the analysis. What is it going to do politically? What impact is it going to have? What consequences can we foresee? That's what my show is all about today. Karibu sana and enjoy. The defection yesterday, very dramatic sudden defection of the UDA Vice Chair Kipruto Arapkiro from William Samoy Ruto's UDA to Raila Odinga's Azimio Laumoja has sent shockwaves right across the country called Kenya and well beyond. What? Nobody saw that one coming. <laughs> anyway, what I want us to do on today's show is to break it down coldly. Eh? Kama barafu. Bila emotions. Bila my feelings. We just analyze the impact politically. Okay? So if you're a UDA supporter, Find a place to put your heart and your feelings and your emotions. Yeah. Find a place to put them aside. And just use your brains for this one. If you're a supporter of Azimio, don't get too excited. Yeah. Also find a place to put your emotions aside. Let's just engage our minds here. And try and break this down. Figure it out. And come to the right conclusion on the real political impact of this very shocking thing that has happened. Now for starters, let us put it in its proper perspective. Let's look at it this way. This is like the ODM deputy chair, Ali Hassan Joho, defecting from Azmio to UDA. Or maybe the Jubilee vice chair. <laughs> Daudi Wamurade, yeah, living as a meal for UDA. <laughs> Even thinking about that is funny. I think you agree with me. Bottom line, it is major, first of all, because 
this was a UDA insider. Now that one is critical. More so because we know in UDA they are very sensitive about their secrets. And UDA insiders are very few. Trust me. Ni wachache sana. I don't think it is possible to count them on your two hands. Yeah. Only one of your hands, the fingers. Yeah, those are the insiders within UDA. So that one, he, 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 that one is a major blow to UDA. Because even if he keeps UDA secrets, does not reveal them to Azimio, he will be involved in the campaigns. And Azimio people had better listen very carefully when he tells them, no, 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 don't do it like that. Do it like this. <laughs> There'll be a reason for him to say that based on his insider knowledge. Privileged information. Not available even to the most radical supporters of UDA. Yeah, let's get that very clear from the onset. The other thing that really hit me very hard were the reasons he gave for leaving UDA. Now, I know many of us may not know about this Wanakiro and his background and his character. We may not know those very well. But trust me when I tell you, this is a man who is straight like a ruler. Ajui kona kona. No. And as Martha Karua said, this is a man who is dedicated to whatever he puts his hand to do. This is a man who has been fighting for a better Kenya for a long time. Indeed, if I can be honest with you, I always felt that he was in the wrong place, especially being such a high-ranking officer, if I can call him that, of the UDA camp. I believe there is another very big story there, how he ended up in UDA. There is another very big story there that we may be told one day. Maybe. I say maybe because it may be something that Bonakiro is still very ashamed about. Yeah, because we are all human. We have our weaknesses. We have our moments of weakness. When we make decisions that we later regret. Decisions that we regret for the rest of our lives. It happens. Uh, in this life to all of us even the most principled anyway he mentioned that the reason the main reason why he left UDA decided to defect was because there was no democracy or at least in his opinion he saw that democracy was being nyongwad <laughs> if I can talk like a Kenyan Democracy was being stifled within UDA. And he gave the example of the man called Gashagwa, the deputy president nominee, Ruto's running mate. Kiro told us when the deputy president picked Gashagwa, it was the last straw for him. He realized Hapa. Hakuna democracy. Now in case you took in my previous video. Where I was talking about the problems within UDA. Yeah, maybe I want to add something to that video. Maybe I didn't put enough emphasis. On just how major. The impact. Of Gashagwa's nomination is. Within the party. It seems to have destroyed. UDA. That's really what it is. Whatever reason the deputy president had on settling for Gashagwa, hmm, the consequences, it's very clear now, he cannot handle. Wah? 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 Because so far, I have talked to many people. I have read many statements from UDA people. Nobody seems to support Gashagwa. Indeed, my question is, where are the Gashagwa supporters 
with the new day. I'm really looking for them. With my mblika mwizi. And I still can't see them. Maybe I need a floodlight. Very powerful light. Eh? Kwa tafuta. They are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> my friends, you know this is politics. And in politics, upende usipende. You need supporters. Even the communist party in Russia. Hmm? Pure communism. Hmm? Following orders. Strict hierarchy. Even that needed supporters. While the communist party remained powerful in Russia during the Cold War. Even they needed support from people. It is impossible in politics to do anything without support. You can't do it kifua. You need at least some supporters. Now this Gashagwa man. Eh. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Because yes you have money. Yes you are pouring money. Yes you have invested a lot of money. A huge fortune into UDA. But hey. This is politics. It's not a company. It's not a corporation. In a corporation, money is all that matters. And your money talks. But this is politics. You need support. It seems even 5% support from UDA, Gashagwa does not have. 5%. Ajafikia 5%. And that one, that is tragic. Very tragic for UDA. Yeah, and their bid the presidency. That should be obvious. Anyway, the other thing is that Kiro told us it took two weeks, almost two weeks, to come up with this decision. Yani, it was not a rash decision, despite what happened. Yeah, the last straw that triggered this, the Kashagwa Manenos, despite that, he did not make a decision immediately. He thought through he thought about it for more than a week. Now that one is significant. And may I remind you that Kirwa is a thinker. Kirwa, despite being a hot-blooded Kalenjin man, thinks through his decisions. You know this guy has two master's degrees. Yeah. This guy is intellectual. He thinks, I know there are some intellectual guys who are still very emotional. Najua sangine masomo, haitoi ujinga kwa mtu. Somebody told me that the other day. And that is true. But not with Kirwa. Kirwa is a thinker. So, I started asking myself, what has Kirwa seen that maybe other people within UDA have not seen yet? Maybe he has done his math. Amefanya maesabu yake. And he has realized who the winner of the 2022 presidential race is going to be by a landslide. Maybe that's what he has done. I'm not saying that's what he has done. But I'm just trying to speculate here. Because obviously, Kiro told us a lot of things. Yeah, When he was being welcomed into Azimio. But there's also a lot more he did not tell us. Yeah? And it's not wrong to try and read a man's mind. Is it? You know, Kiro has a history of being very stubborn in sticking with something. Yeah, even when it is very obvious that that thing is a sinking ship. In the run-up to the 2007 presidential elections, Kiro unlike most in the Kalenjin community, was in the Kibaki camp. Oh yes, he was still deep inside PNU. He was still very deeply inside NAC, the National Rainbow Coalition, yeah, that had swept Kibaki into State House. Let me not go so much into that now. You can get all the shocking details in my book. Let the blood flow. It's an ebook. It can be in your email in seconds. 
and you can print it out on your computer printer and read it like a book. It will come out in the correct format. Yeah, details on your screens right now. If you've not yet received that ebook, yeah, details on how you can. Which of course will guarantee you the video version of the same, yeah, which is loading. I hope to release it very soon. But if I was within UDA, if I was a firm UDA supporter, there's one thing I'd be very worried about. And that is the possibility that Kirwa could open up yeah, a floodgate of defections. You know, there's some people when they defect, it has such a huge impact. It nudges on the people who are hesitating. It nudges on the people who are still sitting on the fence. And what results is a massive defection of others. If I was within UDA, that is the number one thing I'd really be fearing right now. What are the possibilities of such a thing happening? In my view, quite high. And you did had better pray very hard that it does not happen. Because already the perception of a member of the Kalenjin community defecting from UDA to Azimio, the perception surrounding that already is major, very major. It tells us, or rather it implies, that not everybody in the community is with the deputy president. Now, this is something many of us have known for a long time. There are many in the community who are grudgingly, hmm, Nashingo Pande, supporting the deputy president. Because he's one of their own. Yeah, and this is politics. And that's the person closest yeah, to state house. That is the person with the highest chance, possibility, of actually being installed into state house. And is one of us. So even if we have personal issues, we just follow him. Yeah. But we know, many people know, that not all the community is firmly behind him. Not the way the community was firmly behind Daniel Toretich Rapmoy. Of course there were murmurings. Many in the Kalenjin community believed that Moy took all the development to his native Baringo, where nothing is happening. Also, they say, you know, cattle rustlers, generally a very backward area of the community. And the people who suffered are the development conscious Kalenjins, like the Nandi. You know, Moy did nothing for the Nandi. And yet, Nandi, Nandis, are the powerhouse of the community. Yeah, those are the people who are development oriented. Those are the people who keep the Kalenjin flag flying yeah, within the Kalenjin nation and well beyond. Moi totally ignored them. And there's a lot of bitterness about this. But generally speaking, most of the community was solidly behind Moi. It is not the same with Ruto. And I believe that D.P. Ruto's high-handedness, yeah, which was very clearly illustrated with the choice of Gashagwa, going against what the entire party felt, what a vast majority of people in the party felt, this is politics, that may have been the last straw for many within UDA, even those who are yet to defect, even those who will never defect, they'll just remain there, but they'll remain in the background, not doing much. They may even decide not to vote on voting day. Yeah, and all that is not good news for Deputy President William Samoy Ruto, is it? But now let us answer another burning question. What impact will the Kiro defection have in Azimio? What does he bring to Azimio? What advantages does he come with? As he joins as a meal. How many votes <laughs> will he bring into the as meal basket? Now that's an important question. Or rather important questions. In my view, not much. 
and I could be wrong. Yeah, but in my view, not much. Because Kirwa is not a popular politician within the Kalenji nation. He's a principled one. He's very popular within his constituency. Yes. But within the nation, he does not have enough influence. Even within his constituency, his influence would not be enough yeah, to turn DP root of voters into as male voters. Yeah. Let's just speak the truth the way it is. However, the biggest thing Kiro brings into Azmio is the perception value, which in politics can be very major. And indeed, this can be very major right across the country, well beyond the Kalenji nation. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that Arab Kiro's defection will not bring a single vote in from the Kalenji nation. No, that's not what I'm saying. I am sure there are some votes that will swing the Azimio side. But what I'm saying is I don't think they're significant enough. You know, I don't think there are many enough for us to pay any attention to them. But the perception value countrywide is enormous. It could be hundreds of thousands of votes. Oh yes. Think of the common man down there and what they're seeing right now. Atamutu Aruto. Anamuacha. Hui mtu alikuwa deputy mwenye kiti. Anamuacha anaenda kwa raila. Aya, ya, 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 ya. The perception is important. And as a result, you dear are going to lose many, many votes countrywide. Now, of course, I'm making this commentary when Raila has yet to make his move. <laughs> because Raila doesn't miss a trick. What on the in But this man is a guru in politics. It depends heavily on what Raila does next. It is possible that Raila could put on the table something for the community, the Kalenjin community, which he wants to deliver yeah, via Kiro. Yeah, it could be a docket in a certain ministry. It could be an appointment to a certain office that will be of great significance, that will help the Rift Valley. Something like that. And that could sway voters. Oh yes. Because I predict that in the days and weeks to come, there's going to be a lot of disillusionment within the UDA camp. And I'm not saying this because I hate UDA. This is just brutal politics. All the things that have been happening, just think about them. Yeah, the nomination of Gashagwa, the open rebellion within UDA against this choice by the deputy president, the defection of Kiro, etc., etc. All those things put together are too much. I predict that there will be a lot of disillusionment. People are going to be very disillusioned with the new DA as the polls draw nearer and nearer. It's a wrong time for this to happen, but I believe it will happen. Very sad for UDA and their bid for the presidency. But this kind of environment is perfect for Raila to make a move yeah, and to offer something, an olive branch, an appointment to the community yeah, and to make Kirwa the carrier yeah, or the representative of that opportunity offered to the Kalenjin community. Because remember, Zemio is about bringing everybody together, all Kenyans together. It doesn't matter from what part of the country they are from. But enough with the speculation. Let's wait and see what happens. Yeah, but you can be sure something will happen. And that something is going to be major. Yeah, because Kirwa being Kirwa and Kirwa being from the Rift Valley, the Kalenjin Rift Valley, wah, 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 it has to happen. Now, Kirwa is mentioned in my ebook, Let the Blood Flow. And it's very interesting. You see, as Kibaki was preparing, 
for the controversial, very difficult elections for him, his bid to be re-elected in 2007, Mutai Ngunye, the political analyst, was advising Kibaki. And by the way, I believe many people don't know this, I am told Professor Mutai Ngunye is married to a Kalenjin lady. Yeah, That means he should understand the community very well. And therefore his advice to Kibaki, which went against advice that Moy had given, yeah, was taken very quickly by Kibaki handlers and Kibaki himself. Because the late President Daniel Toriti Charap Moy, who was also advising Kibaki at the time, had given Kibaki a plan of how to deal with the then growing influence of William Samoy Ruto, the Rift Valley. Yeah. And that advice had to do with Buona Kirwa, the one who defected yesterday. Yeah. Now, of course, you'll find all that information in my ebook, Let the Blood Flow. I've even written the page number, you'll find it in, on your screens right now. Yeah, so if you've already purchased the ebook, maybe you've not reached that page, or maybe you skipped that page, you don't remember what you read, take that page number, rush there, and read that super fascinating information. Yeah, very telling, extremely telling. Now, details on how you can get Let the Blood Flow on your screens right now, in case you don't have it. Take advantage of this offer. So, what is going to happen going forward? What kind of consequences, apart from what I've already mentioned, should we expect from this latest move that has sent shockwaves right across the country? Only time can tell. Now, please remember to share this video widely if you've enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Until next time, this is Chris Komekocha.